Hey everyone, in this video I will show you how to establish secured SSH connection with remote server using key-based authentication and username password-based authentication. I will also show you how to generate private and public key pair that you can use for the key-based authentication. And last, I'll show you how to connect to remote SSH server on port other than the default SSH port 22. The first thing that you want to do before we begin is make sure that you have OpenSSH client installed in your system. And to do that, all you have to do is run SSH. SSH. And if you see message similar to what I see, that means that you have the OpenSSH client already installed. And if you don't, you're going to have to go ahead and install it. Now, if you're on a Mac, you should have it. There's no way you don't have OpenSSH as all Mac operating systems come prepackaged with it. If you're on a Windows, there's a chance that you don't have it. And you're going to have to go to settings and install it from there. And if you need a little bit of assistance with that, let me know in the comments under the video and I can give you details and instructions on how to do that and if you're in the linux debian based all you have to do is run app get install open ssh client and that will install it for you and if you are on any other distribution uh, that doesn't use the app package manager make sure you use whatever package manager your distribution is using to get the open ssh client installed once you have the open ssh client installed you can go ahead and try to make your first connection now the first thing that i'm going to show you is the very basic usage of the command to connect to remote server with SSH with the very basic format of the command all you have to do is type SSH followed by either the IP or the name of that server in my case I'm gonna go ahead and try to connect to a server via its IP so I'm gonna go ahead here and type 10.0.0.61 when you run the command like this if you don't specify user don't specify port what your client will do is it will try to connect to the specified server here on the default port 22 with the user that you're currently logged in with. So in my case, that will be my admin user. So I'm gonna go ahead and run it and you see what happens. So once you run it, if this is the very first time that you're trying to connect your server, you will be prompted with this message. And this message basically tells you that we've never connected to the server before. Uh, we don't know anything about it. Are you sure that you wanna continue connecting to that server? So in our case, we know that we wanna connect to this server. We're gonna go ahead here and say yes. And what that will do is it will Add this server to our known host list and in the future when we try to connect to this server on the IP address we won't be prompted with that message because our system will be trusting this server now once you're prompted for the password you can go ahead and enter your password and one thing just to be clear here is when you enter a password here you're entering the password for that admin user on that remote server not for the admin user on this local machine. Sometimes people get confused because they're connecting with uh, the user on their local machine. They think that the password is the same and it may be the same, but sometimes it may be different. So make sure that you're using the password for the admin user on that server if they're different. You can go ahead after you enter the password and hit enter and that should establish connection to your server. And as you can see, I was able to successfully connect to my remote SSH server. And just a couple of things to check on here is I'm gonna run host name. Oh, I misspelled that, so host name. And that will give me my server name, SSH server. And if I run who am I, that will give me the user that I'm connected with. And if I run pwd, that will give me the directory that I got in, which is my user's home directory. Now, the next thing that I wanna show you is that we can do this exact same thing, but instead of using the server IP, we can use the server's host name. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit from here. And to close your connection, all you have to do is type exit and my connection will close and that will bring me back into my client machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear this screen. What we're gonna do is we're gonna run this exact same command, but instead of connecting to the IP, we're gonna use the server name. SSH server is my server name. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter here. Now, as you can see, I'm getting prompted here with that similar message to that first one when I connected the first time to the server. But now it tells me that we already know about this server. We already know about this host, but we know about it and we know that he has a different name. And in this case, it doesn't give us the name, it's hashed. But we know that this name is the server's IP, right? Because that's how we connected the first time. So the reason why we get this message is because our system knows about the server and it knows that the server is called different than SSH server in our case. Since we already know of that, 
that and we know that there is nothing fishy here we can just go ahead here and say yes and that will add now the ssh server name to the list of known servers so the next time when we try to connect we won't get that message so i'm going to go ahead here and i'm going to enter my password again make sure you use the password for that same user on the server and there you go now i was able to connect to that ssh server using the server name instead of the server ip address so i'm going to go ahead and exit from here i'm going to clear my screen and the next thing i'm going to show you is how to connect with a different user user other than your currently logged in user to do that all you need to do is before the server name or before the server ip in your ssh command all you need to do is put the name of the user that you want to connect with so in my case, I'm going to connect with user called Debian, followed by the at symbol, and then followed by the server name or the server IP. It doesn't matter which one you put here. So I'm going to go ahead and do it via server name. And as I mentioned earlier, since we already added this server name to the known hosts file, we shouldn't get prompted with that fingerprint message. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter here, and this should prompt me for my user's password. There you go. It asks me for the Debian user's password. And once you enter the password, assuming that you entered it correctly, you should be connected to that remote server. And now if you go ahead here and say, who am I? We'll see that we're connected with the Debian user. And if I do PWD, we'll be, oh, I misspelled that. And if we do PWD, we will be in the Debian's home directory. So the next thing I'm going to show is how to connect to a remote server using key-based authentication. So I'm going to go ahead and exit from the server again, and I'm going to clear my screen. And as you can see here in my current directory, I have this file called Debian key, and this is my private key for my Debian user. And I'm going to use this key now to connect to the server. So this time when I use the key, I won't be prompted for a password. I will automatically connect to that server so to do that all i have to do is run again the exact same command but here you're gonna need to pass path to the key so to do that you're gonna have to use the i flag and then here you have to give a path to the key so in my case my key is located in my current directory so I can just go ahead and give it like this. So just give the name of the file. Or if your key is located in a different directory, you're going to have to give the full path to the key, which in this case will be home. And this is the admin user. So that's what the full path will look like. So again, depends where your key is, you may have to give full path to the key or you can just give the key name if you are in that directory as I am right now so that followed by the user that you're trying to connect with name and followed by the server either IP or name so I'm going to go ahead here and hit enter and as you can see I was able to successfully connect to this server with my Debian user. So if I run who am I, you can see that I'm connected with Debian and my current directory is Debian. So I'm gonna go ahead here and exit again and go back to my client machine and I'm gonna clear my screen. And then the next thing I'm gonna show you is how to generate a key pair so you can make a user that currently doesn't have key-based authentication able to connect to that remote server with a private public key pair. So to do that, we're gonna use my admin user. Like right now, my admin user does not have ability to connect to the server using key-based authentication. This user can only connect to the server using username and password. And to generate a key pair for that user, all you have to do is run the following commands. So ssh-keygen, then you can do dash t, and that will give it what type of a key you want to create. So in my case, I want to create an RSA key, and you're going to want to follow that by dash b flag. And here we're going to give it the size of the key in bytes. And in our case, we want to do 2048. Eight. And then what you want to do is pass this dash C and make sure you type uppercase C. And here we're going to just tag our key so we know what that key is for. If you don't do that, it's very hard to figure out what that key is for once you have more than one keys. So here I'm going to say admin and that will tell me that this is the key for my admin user then you can go ahead and hit enter then you'll be asked where you want to put the key by default your key will be stored in the, your user's home directory under this ssh directory in a file named idrsa i don't want to put my key there i want to put my key in my home directory in a file named admin so i'm just going to go ahead here 
and instead of us uh, keeping it to the default i'm just going to type admin.key and that will create a file called admin.key and it will put my key in it i'm going to go ahead and hit enter here you can enter a passphrase here that will make your key more protected but we'll also ask you for this passphrase every time when you try to establish the connection so in my case i don't really care about passphrase i'm just going to skip this so all you have to do here is just press enter and press enter again and that will create your key without a passphrase and once you have this key created if you go ahead and list your current directory you will see the two files got generated here one is an admin key so this will be my private key and the other one is the admin key dot pub which is the public key and if i go ahead and cat this admin key pub you will see that right at the end here we have this admin and this is this tag that we gave it up here while we were creating it so you can put any message here just make sure use that to give yourself some kind of a reminder of what this key is about because otherwise when you open it if this is not here you will have no clue what this key is for so the next thing that you need to do once you have this key created you gonna have to go ahead and upload it to the server that you're going to be connecting with so again the public key goes to the server that you're connecting in so if you have access to the server you can go ahead and upload that key yourself but if you're connecting to somebody else's server you're going to have to provide them with this key and they can go ahead and add it to their server and then you'll be able to connect to that server from your machine using this private key here now in our case we're going to be doing this for our admin user and our admin user already has access to the server so i'm going to show you how to upload the key yourself you can manually do that via scp or ssh and copy and paste it on the server but the easiest way to do is to use the ssh copy id command so all you need to do here is type ssh dash copy dash id followed by flag i and here you need to give it path to the public key so in my case again the public key is in my current directory so i can just type the name of the file and if that public key file is on a different place you will have to type a full path to that file and once you have that in then the next thing you want to do is you're going to have to give it the user so in my case, we're going to be uploading this admin key for our admin user. So I'm going to say admin and that will be going to our SSH server. Again, here you can either use the IP or the server name. I'm going to go ahead and use the server name again because I don't remember what the IP was. So SSH server and then you're going to go ahead hit enter and then the system will try to upload this key to the server you'll be prompted for your password so go ahead and enter your password assuming you enter your password correctly you should be able to connect in my case i misspelled my password so let's give it one more try and this time was right and there you go now my key was uploaded to the server under user admin so now if i go ahead and try to ssh to my server again so ssh but this time i'm going to use a key instead of a password so I'm going to go ahead here and say admin key and again to connect to the server you're going to need to use your private key so not the public one the public one gets uploaded on the remote server and this will be followed by my username followed by the server name and then you can go ahead and hit enter oh I misspelled the SSH make sure you type your commands correctly and there you go I was able to successfully log into my server using my admin user using the key based authentication now the next thing I'm going to show you is how to connect your remote SSH server using port other than port 22 as you probably know by default SSH runs on port 22 but sometimes administrators will change that port and they'll use a different port mainly they do that for security purposes so if you are told that the server that you're trying to connect to or if you know that the server that you're trying to connect to does not listen on port 22 all you have to do is pass a flag that tells your ssh client that you want to establish connection to that remote server on port other than port 22 and to do that all you have to do is add dash p space and the number of the port that you're trying to connect so for example we can do 2222 two, two, two. and as in this case when you try to connect your SSH client will try to establish connection to that remote server on port 2222 and in my case that will fail because my server is not listening in that port but again if you know that the server you're trying to connect to listens on a different port than port 22 this is how you tell it to connect on that non-default port and this is all for today i hope this video was useful if you liked it please go ahead click on the like button and if you want to see my future videos please go ahead subscribe for my channel thank you for watching